What's the best diet? What should I do to lose weight? Questions I have been asked thousands, maybe million, no, let's say thousands of times in my over 15 year career as a registered dietitian and a nutritionist. So what is the best diet? And what should you do to lose weight? I'm gonna answer the question, these questions in just a few short minutes. So bear with me. <laughs> but in the meantime, I wanna discuss the dietary dogma dilemma that's permeating the information that we receive on a daily basis. Now, when I was crafting my talk and I was thinking about uh, really the whole ethos of it, I kept coming back to this word dogma. And I didn't really want to use it because it's one of those words we don't use in our everyday language. But I just kept coming back to it because it hit the nail right on the head of exactly what I was trying to, um, the point I was trying to get across today. And so if you're like me and you've always like kind of little reminders of definitions, I am providing you with the definition from the Oxford Dictionary on dogma. A dogma is a principle or set of principles laid down by an authority as incontrovertibly true. Well, what does incontrovertibly mean? <laughs> Put the definition, not able to be denied or disputed. So essentially, a dogma is a principle or a set of principles laid down by an authority as something not to be disputed or denied. But what happens when social media has democratized authority? And literally anybody can get on social media and they can talk about anything. Nutrition related, health related, doesn't matter if it's vetted, doesn't matter if there's any research supporting it and they can talk about it. Because again, social media has really democratized authority. If you've ever found yourself doom scrolling, you can admit it, it's all right. Maybe you were supposed to be working, maybe you were supposed to be sleeping, I'm guilty of this. Um, you might have come across some kind of crazy things on social media. An example is lemon and coffee for weight loss. Yes, there are people saying that if you squeeze a little bit of lemon in your coffee, you can lose five pounds in a week. <laughs> now I'm telling you again, I've been a dietitian in, in this world for 15 years or so. It's not gonna work. There's other things that can make you lose <laughs> five pounds in a week, but squeezing a little bit of lemon in coffee in coffee is not gonna do it. But these types of claims gain so much traction that they end up getting picked up by major publications. And the good thing is that ma these major publications oftentimes uh, bring in experts and quote experts to refute these kind of crazy claims. But again, these uh, crazy posts and claims have reached millions of people to gain so much momentum and to gain so many, so many legs, so to speak, that these major publications are even talking about them in the first place. What about those what I eat in a day posts where someone really aspirational and fit shows you exactly what they eat in a day? Again, another example of something that can gain a lot of momentum enough for major publications to talk about the dangers of Again, what this particular influencer or content creator eats in a day to look the way that they look. If you've worked in any type of marketing role, or even if you've been a user of social media in the past five to 10 years or so, you're probably familiar with social media algorithms. Again, especially for those in marketing, if you do any kind of work with social media, it's like, how do you hack the algorithm to get your posts seen, things like that. But these social media algorithms are unique digital pathways that can take you from liking your former high school's classmates picture of a salad. Here we have Bert from high school posting a picture of a salad, hashtag leaning green. And that can take you to an influencer who you've never even seen before, never intentionally followed, showing her at super fit and pretty Pam. There is no real at super fit and pretty Pam. I made sure before I put this on here. <laughs> um, showing you that this green juice is the exact reason why she looks so good. And the exact reason 
why she has so much energy and she can make it to that 10 a.m. boot camp class on the Upper East Side. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not all at super fit and pretty pale. Lots of followers and six pack abs do not always equal knowledge and expertise. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> doesn't mean, not mutually exclusive, doesn't mean they don't go hand in hand, but just because someone has lots of followers and six pack abs, again, doesn't mean that what they're talking about is truthful or evidence based. Now, a lot of times, the claims and health advice that people talk about on social media can't really do much good or can't really do much bad. I mean, again, squeezing lemon juice in your coffee, people squeeze lemon in tea. Like, it's what's it gonna really do, good or bad? Very benign. But it's when these social media trends start making claims that certain things are an end-all be-all cure, or when they start recommending that you consume household cleaning products like borax, yes, people are drinking borax. It's true. Um, that's when we run into some issues here. And again, social media, people are talking about squeezing a little bit of the borax powder into water and saying it can do all these crazy, cure all these ailments and things like that. It's gained enough momentum and it's gained enough legs for major publications to talk about it. And again, these are typically always refuting it and bringing in experts to talk, to talk and kind of convince you to not drink borax in case you needed someone to tell you not to. Now, I'm 38 years old, so I'm an older millennial. I remember a time before social media. Yes, kind of crazy for the Gen Zs and, and the younger generations, but I remember a time before social media. And I remember a time when there were still dietary dogmas. They just came at us in a different way, and they just kind of circulated in a different way. A very innocent, cute example is chicken soup. How many times have we had a cold or felt under the weather? And if we're lucky enough, maybe we had a family member that made a great chicken soup, so they made us some homemade chicken soup, brought it to us, yes. Or, you know, just a good old can of soup we keep in the pantry, just as good. Again, been around for years, we've been hearing that chicken soup is good for a cold. Enough that people actually did research on it. They actually did research to see how chicken soup could help make you feel better. And it probably comes as no surprise to those with a science background, um, you know, the doctors in the audience are viewing this, that, you know, at the end of the day, it was found that the hot fluids helped the vapor, helped with your nose, uh, with breathing. Um, the hot fluid felt good in the throat, but it didn't cure the cold. It didn't cure any type of upper respiratory bacterial infection. It didn't cure any virus. Because again, it's chicken soup. Now, again, silly example, but someone who is not properly trained or someone who's seeking a sensationalized post on social media to gain uh, followers, views, likes, shares, things like that, they might take this information and run with it. And they might say, chicken soup cures the common cold and blah, 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 and I have a secret to cure the common cold or I have a secret to cure XYZ virus, etc. So again, silly example, but it kind of just brings us back to the game of telephone when we were kids where one person starts with a statement or a story and they whisper it into the person's ear next to them. And before you know it, by the time it gets to the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, millionth person, it can take on a completely different form of what the person originally was talking about. Now, again, older millennials, so I have my, I can be cynical about social media at times. So I'm gonna harp on social media again probably comes as no surprise that there's always at any given time a lot of people looking for nutrition and weight loss advice online. Social media, Google, things like that. A couple of years ago, it was uh, noted in January 2021 that 45% of people globally were currently trying to lose weight. 
And as you can imagine, it's probably very similar in the past couple of years. With the current world population at 8.1 billion people, that's a lot of people. Even if all these 45% people are not, uh, not going online, there's still a lot of people that are looking online and on social media for weight loss advice, for nutrition advice. The problem is, is that it's never gonna be all one size fits all. There's so many different considerations that come into play. So if someone can find an approach or a protocol that works well for them and it puts them in a calorie deficit because that's how you lose weight in a calorie deficit, that's great. But if it's making them completely miserable and they can't eat their favorite foods, then we run into some issues. So not gonna be able to stick with it. We have different cultural preferences. We have different budgets, socioeconomic status, different financial abilities. We have different ethical beliefs about the foods that we eat. We have different foods that make us feel good and some foods that make us feel awful. Not even from a gastrointestinal, you know, GI aspect, but even just from a, some foods make us feel more energized, some foods make us feel more sluggish. We also have accessibility to consider. Different parts of the country, different parts of the world, we all have different accessibility to some foods and no accessibility to other foods. There's been a little bit of a joke the past couple of years I've noticed between like the nutrition and fitness world of the 20 year old um, influencer with no kids yet um, saying we all have the 20, same 24 hours in a day to make this 10 step organically grown farm to table uh, meal for our family on a Tuesday night. Again, very, uh, very sarcastic, tongue-in-cheek example, but there's a lot of this that happens. Basically, again, someone's saying, we have the same 24 hours in a day. Unless, whether we have kids or not, unless we're so exhausted and burnt out from the day, the demands of our days, our everyday life, that leftovers just make more sense. Or what about if we don't have a budget for these all-organic, farm-to-table foods? Again, we're all very different. Not even from a behavioral standpoint or a socioeconomic standpoint, but from a genetic standpoint and biological standpoint. Even if everyone ate the same things every day for a full year, did the same amount of exercise, we would all look very different. Because again, we're all unique. And so at the end of the day, I think most of us want to assume and believe that people have good intentions. And I think a lot of the posts that go on social media do come from an innocent, well-being place, well-meaning place. But again, we have to consider that this rat race of social media the past few years that's taken over and this relentless pursuit of likes, shares, and views has really become more of a priority sometimes over exercising due diligence when it comes to the advice that people are giving especially making sure that these statements hold any kind of validity or there's any kind of evidence backing these extreme statements that sometimes people will make on social media. So this comes full circle and brings us back to the beginning. I promised you that I was going to tell you as a dietitian what I feel that is the best diet and what you should do to lose weight if you need to or if you want to. Oh, you ready for this? You probably have figured out what I'm going to say by now, and you've probably figured out that it's not sensational, it's not sexy, um, and it's not groundbreaking. <laughs> the answer is, it depends. It depends on so many factors, and I, I know I've talked about a lot of that for the past 10, 15 minutes or so. It really does depend on you as an individual. You know, if you've ever ever gotten fired or ever gotten broken up with whatever and you've maybe said, you know what, you're never going to find another one like me. I'm one in a million. I have news for you. And it's good news. You're one in 8.1 billion. How cool is that? You literally are so unique, each and every one of you. And so you have to be discerning when it comes to the information that you are consuming and utilizing. And so I'm going to leave you with three things to keep in mind when searching for the best dietary approach or weight loss approach. One, who is making these statements or claims? Do they have any sort of credentials or lived experiences? Keep in mind, even people with valid credentials can still make extreme claims. 
Number two, other people making the claims, citing research. And number three, I'm going to quote good old Socrates on this one because he said it best. Know thyself. You need to know thyself. You need to know your preferences, your lifestyle, what makes you feel good. Because again, at the end of the day, as I mentioned, you are one in 8.1 billion. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.